Thank you very much for that, Mick. Um, so we're going to spend the next 10-15 minutes or so giving you a very quick canter through uh, the pig market, what's been happening last year um, and what we're forecasting to happening to get to happen this year. So to overview, uh, we'll go through the UK market, we'll have a look at the EU and the global market for last year or so, then we'll move forward towards the UK outlook, then have a look at the global outlook. And finally, I just want to finish with a couple of wild cards that, that could come and upset the apple cart. So, as I'm sure you are all aware, pig prices through 2016, wow, roller coaster year for them. They started the year at the lowest in real terms since February 2000, and they ended the year at over 150 pence per kilo, which was more than 40 pence per kilo more than the lowest uh, that they saw in March. Uh, Prices were rising, there was strong export demand, particularly China, there was a tightening of supply, and there was a strong EU price as well. And these were all factors that helped to support, grow, and build the pig price throughout 2016. Production started to fall back through the year also. Whilst it started strongly in the beginning of the year, tightening of supply was seen from the summer and through to the back end of the year. Both imports and exports were up. And this was primarily driven by fresh and frozen pork. What was interesting or uh, to be aware of with the import figures was that from the spring or late spring, we saw a surprising increase in the Danish imports. So far to November, these were up 72% on the year earlier. So somehow there's some queries that's being raised over this data at the moment. This rise in imports goes against the trends that were implied by pig prices we would expect import volumes to be down as the EU product became more expensive. So therefore we think the import figure has been slightly overinflated. When we look at exports, they were up, but maybe not as high as expected, given the weak pound in the second half of the year. This may have been exacerbated by the tightening of supply in addition to a better price being achieved on the domestic market. When we look at the domestic market, if you look to the 52-week picture, retail sales would be down on 2015. However, and what this graph shows us at the moment, is the 12-week view for the current well, until the 4th, 4th of January 2017. And here we can see that while fresh and frozen pork sales are down, in fact there has been a slight upturn in processed pig meat, although this has been at the, at the, uh, at the expense of value with average prices going down. I do, as I'm sure you're all aware, there was a lot of promotional work that was done by AHDB uh, to increase domestic demand both in 2015 and in 2016 with, with two phases of a, a very successful pulled pork campaign um, and promotional work is due to continue within 2017 as well which underpins our strategic ambitions. So in summary, uh, after struggling in the first few months of the year, the pig price turned a corner and there's been going great guns ever since although it has started to flatten into the turn of this year, but not drop as it had done a year earlier in the first quarter. Uh, the first half of the year saw, saw annual production levels increase, but started to peg back as we moved along 2016. Imports and exports were up during the year, but again, Danish volumes slightly inflated, so there are some queries over this. Retail sales continue to struggle, although we have in the last 12 weeks seen an upturn in the processed pig meat, and producers now are back in profits uh, after losing money at the start of the year. So moving on to the EU and global market, as with the UK price, the EU price grew very, very strongly from the spring. Um, it peaked in September and then started to fall back. This fallback and movement was likely caused by the seasonal increase in supplies and at the same time export levels backed off slightly so when this was coupled with a low domestic demand on the continent there was an increased availability of pork and therefore prices began to drop slightly. We also saw EU production fall back in the second half of 2016, again not dissimilar to the UK picture, started strongly in the first half of the year and then pegged back. This was not unexpected, with the December 15 EU pig census showing a reduction in the EU breeding herd, so therefore the tightening of supply was unexpected and this helped to firm the price. Again, EU exports were up during the year, with China being the catalyst for this growth. 
At the end of 2016, over two-thirds of fresh and frozen pork imported by China came from the EU, and EU imports to China were up 89% on the year earlier. So everyone's talked about China. This shows it in the numbers. It's been a real driving force for both the UK and Europe. Just as in summary, the EU price grew rapidly in the spring summer, surpassing 2014 levels. Production has started to fall back in the second half of the year, and exports have increased through the year, driven predominantly by China. So, the UK outlook. Now, the breeding herd, recent DEFRA agricultural surveys have actually shown rises in the UK sow herd. However, we have evidence to suggest that this actually isn't right, um, so we've assumed a declining herd. It, for example, uh, there's been a decrease in the breeding pig feed production, so this supports the likelihood of fewer sows. Also, sow slaughterings were up at the beginning of 2016, despite low cull sow prices. Um, so these both factor towards actually a declining breeding herd size. So that's what we've assumed. Um, and we also then forecast that whilst numbers were back in 1516, they will start to recover slowly. So therefore, with the assumed decline breeding herd, slaughterings are forecast to fall, uh, to fall in the first half of 2017 before recovering in the latter half of the year. With production, carcass weights have increased over time, um, and this is largely due to improvements in genetics and, and the relatively low cost of feed. However, a tightening supply in the first half of 2017 should result in actually more modest increases in weights, uh, with pigs coming forwards to slaughter when they are ready to meet demand. Uh, in addition, the weakening pan will drive increases in input costs, which may further peg back weight gain. Therefore, we forecast production to be largely in line with slaughtering trends, so falling in the first half of 2017 before recovering in the second half of the year. So all this means less pork on the market in 2017. Slaughterings and therefore production um, are, for, are going to be back in the first half of 2017, as we've just seen. So we'd expect only to see a small increase in production during the year because of the movement in the second half. When we look at imports, they're forecast to be back on 2017, especially if the pound remains weak against the euro. This makes UK pork more competitive on the domestic market, um, hopefully encouraging retailers to, to buy British, fulfilling that consumer prefer, uh, preference at a better price. Uh, in addition, the tightening supply on the continent may actually limit the volume of, of pork available to be imported by the UK. But as I've already mentioned, that you know there are these current queries over the uh, accuracy of the HMRC import data, uh, so this may be overstated but we believe this trend to actually follow through. The weak pound should actually help to boost exports also within 2017. But again, this could be pegged back by a tightening domestic supply. So basically, there's less pork available to actually export. So as I've said, as a result of this, there should be less pork available on the market in 2017. So at least in the first half of the year, we would expect this to support prices. Okay, so looking at the EU and global outlook, the EU breeding herd started declining in, in December 2015. Uh, this trend has continued into the June survey. Uh, some of this effect on production has already been noted, and therefore it's forecast for production to continue to be back during the first half of 2017. Um, as with the UK, this should help support the EU price, um, although if production levels recover later on the year, this may make prices slip further on into 2017. Global production is expected to return to growth in 2017, with the US, Brazil, and Russia continuing to increase their production levels. However, there, there is some doubt over the Chinese trend. Um, whilst there may be some recovery in production, there are very strict environmental controls in China, and this will inhibit large-scale expansion. So we think this may be slightly optimistic. The increased production in the States has led to falling prices. Uh, this will have some effect on the EU pork price and EU pork levels, uh, as it will make EU pork less competitive on the global market.
So it would be remiss of us not to look at China, with it's such the driving force uh, within the global port market. Should Chinese production increase, this, this will impact import trends. And these have dominated global trends and global import trends over the past couple of years. So it goes without saying that the Chinese demand is, is crucial uh, for global prospects in 2017. However, we have started to see in the second half of 2016 that the Chinese price has started to fall. So this could be an early indication that demand may be lower in 2017 than it's been this year. So in summary, uh, the EU's breeding herd was back in June, so we may expect production to fall back into 2017. Prices could be supported more then in the first half of the year. The falling North American price might impact EU ports competitiveness and global production is expected to return to growth, although there is some doubt over the Chinese projection currently. And then finally, I just wanted to have a very quick talk through a few wild cards. We can't talk about markets and not mention Brexit, um, but I'm not going to harp on about this as David Swales is uh, presenting more about this later. Um, but it's a massive a time of massive uncertainty. Article, figure will be uh, Article 50 will be triggered shortly. Um, it's looking increasingly more like a hard Brexit, but again, a lot can happen in two years, and it's a very volatile time. And talking of volatility, the exchange rate has especially been hit by the political situation. We saw the pounds pretty much fall off a cliff uh, after Brexit, um, and obviously that has an impact on, on the UK port price and the EU port price relative. Um, so it's vital to be aware of these knock-on effects. Feed prices have started to increase, um, again exacerbated here um, when, the, when the pound changed value, but again Millie um, will talk, go on and talk about this in our, in our next presentation. Um, but if input prices, uh, particularly feed prices, continue to increase, this will impact uh, profitability. So in summary, uh, the port market has entered a period of tighter supply following the low prices in 15 and early 2016. We forecast um, that, uh, that, that we will recover in the latter half of the year. Um, whilst these are uncertain times, this should mean that the market remains firm for some months to come. EU production has also been tightening over the same period, so this should further help to support the domestic and the European market. Chinese demand looks set to continue, although increased production from other global competitors may impact the size of the market opportunity. Um, and the size of the Chinese demand remains slightly unclear going into the year. So I'd like to thank you very much for listening, um, and I look forward to receiving any questions you may have at the end of this session.